a frenzy. Nowadays, we live in a, in a fast-paced world that's, that's always judged according to that's judged according to successes of what we have achieved. And everything that we do is based on our achievements of what we have achieved, are we success stories, what have we got, what have we, what have we built. And, and everything surrounds, or everything that we do um, is, is filled with this whole idea of are we success stories? Are we doing well in life? And it always becomes about achieving our destinations, achieving our aim. Very often we forget that, that more than the destination, it is about the journey. I remember when I was, when I was very small, my father would, would take me with him to the market and when we went there, he, it was all through that, that shopping. And it, was, it was not very interesting shopping. We used to go to buy vegetables or, or we'd go to buy fish. And, and I, I hated, in, even though it was in, in Dubai, I hated the, the stench inside the fish market. But my father was very particular. He'd take uh, a good length of time in, in, in buying it. So I'd have to sit through or stand through that whole, that whole process. Then he'd take us through the, the vegetable market and it wasn't very interesting. It wasn't like just going into a, into a grocery store or a supermarket where, where you, know, you, have, you have things that interest a child, but there's just, there's just uh, you know, silly vegetables and, and fish. And, and all through that two, three hours, my father would speak a lot to me. And I actually enjoyed the time that he would speak to me and the, the little things he, he used to say and, and sometimes trying to pull my leg and, and it was that father-son as me as a little, little boy, that father-son tussle, my father pulling my legs, knowing exactly where, where it irritates me and, and my responses to him. And when we got back home, I don't think I was ever sad or unhappy that you know in those in those bags there wasn't a a chocolate or there wasn't something interesting for me for me what was interesting was the whole time i spent with him during those those 2 hours or 3 hours we'd go to the to the vegetable market or to the to the fish market and and that was what stays in my memory today i'm not bothered about what was what was brought or or what, what I got out of it, uh, the, the interesting things he, he could have bought for me or he did not buy for me, none of that mattered. What mattered was those two hours of just spending time with him. And that is what stayed in my memory and stays in my memory even today. The time that I spent with my father, that, that whole journey. And I think that journey is so important even in our relationship with God, it's the journey that is important, not just the destination. Uh, here every, every Monday, I have my day off. And uh, on my day offs, I'd take the car and I'd go on my drives. And, I'd, and I'd, uh, the morning or the night before, I'll get on to Google, uh, Google Maps and, and I try and find places where I can go to. And it's... It's generally places I have no clue about. I don't, I don't kind of do a review to know if a particular place is good. I just take Google Maps, just point a place and, and zoom in and see where it is, just see how much the distance is. I take the car and I'd go. There have been times when it has been more than 300 kilometers that I've driven just one way. And every time I've gone on those drives, it's pretty amusing that when I reach the destination, after driving all that much, I spend around 20 minutes in that place, and then I'm driving back. The reason is what interests me is, is not what that destination has to offer. Very often I think I might miss out on certain 
certain uh, interesting points in that destination. But what makes me more happier and what, what gives me more pleasure is the journey. And what, what I do during that journey, the hours of driving and the, what I do during that journey, maybe a call to my parents or, or maybe just the time I spend praying when I'm in the car or, or the things I'm reflecting about or even the little things that I see. I remember once going to a, to a place and on the way I, I stopped and there was this, this, it was near the beach side, somewhere close to the beach side and there was this elderly a uh, couple, they must have been 80, 90, I don't know, but the two of them holding each other's hands and, and walking. And it was a beautiful sight. There's, there's no one around, just the two of them walking towards the beach. And she was so slow with her, with her walking stick in her hand and she was so terribly slow. And him holding her hand and taking that time to be with her as, as they are making their way towards towards the beach. On that whole trip, that stuck in my mind. That, that kind of enriched me. I don't even remember where I was actually going. I don't even remember anything about the destination. But I remember this because that touched my heart. And very often, it's the journey that is far more important than the destination. And I think in, in a world today where everything is about achievements and we are judged by achievements and we are measured by achievements, it's good to ask ourselves, are we people of the journey or are we people obsessed with the destination? Because with the craving to, or with the obsession to get to the destination, today we are able, we are ready to go to any, any length of, of um, experiences any length of measure as long as I get my destination. It could be the right path, it could be the wrong path, it doesn't matter as long as I get my, to my destination and what I get out of the destination. When we put the destination as our end point, we forget that there is a journey in which Jesus has so much to teach us. We don't become what God wants us to become by getting to the destination. We become what God wants us to become is on the journey. The journey is where Jesus teaches us. The journey is where God talks to us. The journey is everything. In the, in the Bible, we read about Moses. Moses came from a background where he grew up in, in the Pharaoh's palace. He had everything for him. He got everything in, in a platter, but everything was messed up in just, just one insane moment. When he sees a Jew is being, being abused and he's angry and he slaps the soldier who falls dead. One insane moment. And everything that he had on a platter and everything that was easy for him, suddenly everything changes. He's, he's made to run away. He's now in the wilderness. He has nothing to lean back onto. He's taking care of his father-in-law's sheep. That means staying with his father-in-law as well. Has nothing of his own. This is the Moses who comes across the burning bush. God meets this man. Not a man who has achieved great things, not a man with power, not a man with possession, not a man who has a great history to talk about himself, not a man with great credentials, but God meets a man who is broken. God meets a man who, is, who has nothing to lean on to. And it is this Moses that God speaks to and God says, come. I will take you on a journey. And that journey is not going to be alone. Moses is told, you will lead the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt. And God gives a beautiful, a beautiful destination, a beautiful description of the destination in, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 17. 
In Exodus chapter 3 verse 17, God describes it and says, It will be a land of milk and honey. We read in Exodus chapter 3 verse 17, I declare that I will bring you up out of the misery of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now God's, God's given this beautiful description of the destination. And Moses, with no great credentials, starts out on that journey with Yahweh, with God. And on that journey, he's leading a set of people who are miserable, who are frustrated, who are angry and getting angrier as the days go by. The days turn into months. The months turn into years. Forty years, the people of Israel are journeying through the wilderness, grumbling, cribbing, angry, upset. They take it all out on Moses. And all of them on that journey. Moses is on that journey as well. But all through the journey, there's only one person who builds a relationship with God. That's Moses. Moses built his relationship with God and God built his relationship with Moses on the journey, not at the destination. It is in the journey that the relationship with God is built. It is during the journey that we as children of God are built up. Moses was built up, not because Moses had great credentials of the past, not because Moses was, was brought up in the Pharaoh's palace, not because Moses had great capabilities, rather Moses was a stammerer. Moses had nothing to to boast about when he met God at the burning bush. But that journey, that journey is where God built Moses up. That journey is where Moses shared a relationship with God. That journey is where Moses got to know God. Not the destination. This is... This is why Moses became so special. Even as the scripture would tell us, even when, when Jesus is described, it's amazing that Jesus is described as the new Moses. A man who journeyed, who started the journey with nothing. But as he kept going on that journey, Moses started being built up. And we can see the transformation of this man. He reaches a stage where Moses is able to go into the presence of God and sit and have those lengthy moments of prayer with God. When Moses comes down the mountain, the people see his face shining. They cover their face and they say, the glory of God is reflected on Moses. Where does that happen? It happens during the journey. It doesn't happen at the destination. When Moses was able to stand in between God and the people. And Moses was able to plead with God. See how beautifully Moses is rising in the presence of God. How beautifully Moses is letting himself be built up by God, not at the destination, but at the journey. Nothing has been achieved at the, at the journey. The journey is a process, a process of being built up. Not everything went right. There were times when things went terribly wrong. There were times when the people wanted to stone Moses. There were times when they were so upset. There were times when even Aaron and his own sister were against Moses. There were times he was all alone. It wasn't that it was a bed of roses for Moses, even as Moses made that journey. That journey was tough. That journey was hard. The journey was difficult. But the journey helped Moses build a relationship with God and it helped God build up Moses. It's so beautiful that, that when the people of Israel were, were, were sinning against God, going into idolatry, when, they, when, they, when Aaron went and built the two, two calves for them, 
the golden calves and the people were worshipping and God's wrath was burning hot in Exodus chapter 32 verse 11. Exodus chapter 32 verse 11, the word says, But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt? When God's wrath is burning, Moses stands in between God and man. We read again in Numbers chapter 14 verse 11 onwards. Numbers chapter 14 verse 11 onwards. The word says, once again, when God's anger is burning hot, the Lord says, how long will this people despise me? How long will they refuse to believe in me? In spite of all the signs that I have done for them, I will strike them with pestilence and disinherit them, says the Lord. Moses doesn't go and hide. Moses doesn't keep quiet and say, well, if, if, if they are done with, it's, it's fine. I better just, just keep quiet so that I get to the destination. Rather, we read in verse 13, but Moses said to the Lord, then the Egyptians will hear of it. For in your might, you brought up this people from among them and they will tell the inhabitants of the land. They have heard that you, O Lord, are in the midst of this people, are seen face to face and your cloud stands over them and you go in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. But if you kill all these people, the nations will start speaking about it. He's standing in between the people and God's wrath and he's interceding for the people. Isn't this the same Moses? Compare him to the Moses of Exodus chapter 3. Compare him to the Moses standing in front of the burning bush. Look at the change and transformation of Moses. The journey is building Moses up. Moses has reached a stage where Moses can stand in between God and man and intercede for man. It happens at the journey, not at the destination. His relationship with God is being built up on the journey, not at the destination. We read in Exodus chapter 33. In Exodus chapter 33. where Moses would ask God with so much of confidence from verse, uh, from verse 17 onwards, the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight and I know you by name. Moses said, show me your glory, I pray. This is a man who has just stood in between God's wrath and the people who have sinned. And he can stand there in the presence of God and with confidence look at God and say, show me your glory. The same Moses who had nothing of credentials when he stood at the burning bush. How beautifully he has grown in that relationship. How well he's turning into a reflection of God. How beautifully he's turning into a child of God. The destination did not make him that. The journey did. The journey is what, is what is building his relationship with God. Our relationships with God are not made at the destination. Our relationships with God are built up during the journey. We cannot think to ourselves, that when I get to the destination, I will build my relationship with God. When God answers my prayer, I will build my relationship with God. Because God blessed me with a good job, I will build my relationship with God. Because God touched my family, I will build my relationship with God. We cannot build our relationships with God at the destination. The relationship with God is built on the journey. Falling in love with God is happens at the journey. 
It's amazing how the 40 years the people of Israel journeyed through the wilderness, there was only one man. There was only one person who built up a relationship with God. All the others were just the same. When they got something, when they got water coming out from the rock, they were happy. That was destination for them. They built their relationship with God on that, that moment, that destination. And what happened? The next time they were, they were thirsty, they rebelled against God. When we try to build relationship with God at the destination, the first problem that comes our way, we will break that relationship again. And that is why today we find a world that says that God is not working. God is, God is not powerful. Why is God not intervening? We are having the, the COVID-19, the, the economy is crashing. There are, there are people whose lives, are, lives have been taken away. People who are sick, families who have been ripped apart. And we think to ourselves, God's not intervening. There's a world that says God's not intervening. God's not doing anything. Then why worship God? If we are trying to build a relationship with God based on the destination, this is precisely how our reaction is going to be. Like the people of Israel, we can journey 10 years, we can journey 20 years, we can journey 40 years, we can journey 70 years trying to build a relationship with God at the destination and yet we will fail in our relationship with Him. When we fail in our relationship with him, never will we be built up. Never will we reflect God. Moses, so beautifully, if you, if you go through Exodus, a, a person, a man who was so ordinary, became so special. To the extent that in Exodus chapter 33, verse 11, it says, Exodus 33, 11, Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. As one speaks to a friend. The Moses of the burning bush is now speaking to God and God speaking to him like he would speak to a friend. That happens on the journey. It's good to ask ourselves, we are, on our journey, are we looking to build a relationship with Jesus? Maybe we might not get to the destination. We need not always get to the destination. Moses never got to the destination. Moses never reached the promised land. As the scripture would say, because, because of, of something that Moses did, which is not very clear, it could be the, the waters that came out of the rock. It's not clear why Moses was precisely not allowed to enter into the promised land. Moses didn't reach the destination, but that didn't take anything away from Moses. Moses didn't need the destination to be built up in God. Moses was built up in God during the journey. Let us not be people who are waiting for the destination to build a relationship with God. Do it at the journey. Moses' life was not a failure. And it's clear because when, when, we, when we keep saying Jesus is the new Moses, we wouldn't compare Jesus to a person who was a failure. Jesus is the new Moses because Moses was never a failure. Just because Moses didn't get to the destination, it is not necessary that all of us on our journey and in our choices are going to get to the destination. God need not provide that to us. Just because I prayed and, and I started something, that doesn't mean I'm going to achieve it. I need not get to the destination. But that doesn't mean that the journey, when I prayed and started that journey with Jesus, will have nothing to offer me. I might not get to the destination, but that doesn't mean 
that it has nothing to offer me. The journey is what is important. The journey is what God is looking at. I might, I might start my studies. I might not complete it. I might not get my degree. Maybe even if I work hard and if, if, if I've really tried and still I don't get it, I cannot complain by saying, why didn't God provide me when I prayed and entered into it? The destination is not what we look at. The journey is what we look at. What did the Lord teach me? How did the Lord build me up? What did the Lord give me during this, this journey? What did the Lord speak to me during the journey? Sometimes we can get so obsessed and our hearts can get so filled with the destination. Our eyes can get so fixed on the destination. Our hearts can be so obsessed with the destination that we miss out on everything that's connected to the journey. I remember when my, when my father used to call me to work uh, in the little field that we had when, when we came back from Dubai and we were, we were back in our house, we had around five acres of land. I wasn't, I wasn't person, a person who was brought up uh, knowing how to do manual labor. So my father had to teach me and he teach me how to do it. And, and he, uh, even after in between my studies, he'd call me and, and we'd, we'd go out into the field and he'd teach me how to do things. Honestly, if you ask me, I have no idea what the fruits of my labor was. Today, when I go home, I don't look at the, the coconut tree and look at the, uh, look at the coconuts on top of it and say that this is, this is the result of the work I did around, around 10 years or 15 years or 20 years ago. It doesn't bother me. I don't, I'm not bothered by what, what that tree produced. Rather, when I look back, today I always look at the time I spent with my father. Those moments built me up. What the destination gave me doesn't bother me today. But the time I spent with my father, the time you spend with your father as you're journeying towards the destination, if you get there or no, the time you spend with your father and what he teaches you, is far more important than what the destination can offer you. And that is what we hold on to. When Saul was on his journey is when Saul experienced God. When he was on his journey, that is when he embraced God. All through the scriptures we read, everywhere that people experience God, they were experiencing God in the midst of a journey. Be it Abraham who was called by God to go on a journey. Be it Moses who was called by God to go on a journey. Be it, be it the apostles who were called by God to go on a journey. Be it the mouse disciples who were called by God to go on a journey. Be it Saint Joseph who was called by God to go on a journey as a refugee. All of them who went on that journey with God were people who shared a relationship with God and got built up in Him. When you and I knock at the gates of the kingdom of heaven, we will not be judged according to destinations we reached. We will be judged on the journeys we made with Christ. The relationships that we shared with the Lord. The relationship in which we were built up in Him. And it's good to ask ourselves, in my today's journey, what have I learned from the Lord? What has the Lord taught me? How has the Lord built me up? Don't wait for your tomorrow's destination. Work on your journey today. Let your eyes and your ears and your heart be open to Jesus today. Because today is the journey. You are not a failure today. You have journeyed with Jesus today. You cannot be a failure today. You might not have achieved destinations today. You might not have achieved what, 
what your workplace says is, is, is the measuring mark of success or exceptions. You might not have achieved your destinations according to what the world defines definitions or, or destinations. But you journey today. And when you journey today with God, you have shared a relationship with Him. Anyone who journeys with the Lord, that day has not been wasted. Today we journeyed with Jesus. If I have known something about myself that the Lord has taught me, if I've known something about Jesus that the Lord has taught me, then my journey is successful today. My journey is blessed because that is how the journey of Moses was. Moses journeyed and got close to God and he became who God wanted him to become. We all call to become who God wants us to become. Journey with him today. You might not have successes. You might not always get the perfect answer to prayer. You might pray and start a business or you might pray and start a job and, and it, you might not achieve everything in it. But it doesn't mean that your journey was not blessed. During that time, your journey will be blessed. The destination you achieve or know doesn't matter. But your journey matters. Because it's important to God. That is where God is with you. The people of Israel, many of them entered into the promised land. What happened after there wasn't that they built a relationship there in the promised land. No, rather they went into idolatry. They went against God. They forgot God. They did filth. In the promised land, they couldn't build a relationship with the Lord. Because when you reach the destination and then plan on building relationships with God, you're not going to do anything. We build our relationships with God on the journey. Today, let us pray for that grace that we build our relationship with Jesus tonight, this day. Lord, teach me what I need to be taught. Speak to me so that I know who I am and who I am supposed to become in your sight. That should be our prayer to the Lord. Let's close our eyes for a moment. We thank the Lord for our today. We all journey. We all have plans for a destination. We would all love to get there. Good jobs, good businesses, good strong financial foundations, good health, wonderful family, lots of answers to prayers. Decisions we have made that should be successful. Lord, all these are destinations. The job promotion, the dream home, these are all my destinations, Lord. The healing of my body, that's my destination. Lord, in the course of trying to get to the destination, there's a journey that you are taking me on. Like you told Abraham, come forth. Like you told Moses, come, I will take you. Like you told the apostles, come and see. Lord, like you walked with the disciples to Emmaus. This journey you have called me to. I do not know, Lord, if I will get to the destination. But one thing is sure, 
that you are there on the journey. That even like Moses experienced strife, pain, struggles, betrayals on that journey, I too might experience it. As long as you are on the journey, Lord, I know that I have an opportunity to build my relationship with you. And I give you the opportunity to build me up in your image and likeness. Lord, let me cherish my journeys. Let me not be bothered or measure my journeys based on the destinations I have achieved. But my journey itself is my blessing. My journey itself is my joy. My journey itself is my preparation for the kingdom. Because you are on that journey. Lead me, Lord. This day, you journeyed with me. Tomorrow, I will get yet another opportunity to journey with you. I look forward to that journey, Lord. Not because it is close or distant from my destination, but because that journey itself is my joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh